Hello Bridgewater College Teacher Education Program students. This is the first in a series of screencasts which will show you how to use the smart board. In particular, how to use notebook software, the software that comes with the smart board. So the first thing we'll do is to find and launch notebook software. I have it down here on my taskbar, so I'll click and launch notebook software. Okay, we have in front of us a blank screen. And certainly one of the first things we learn about the smart board is that it can be used as a whiteboard and I have a whiteboard in front of me that I can, can use. Let's look at some of the tools though that you may want to use as you use the smart board. Now for example, notice out here to the far right there's an up and down uh, icon. If I click on it, it moves the tools to the bottom of the screen which is handy if you're not very tall and you have trouble reaching the top of the smart board. I think I'll put mine back on top. Likewise, if you want to, to move the icons that are over here on the left to the right hand side, you can click on the left hand arrow and it will move the icons to the right. I'm going to leave mine back on the left where they came. Well, since it is uh, a whiteboard, we can use our pens to write on it. In our first activity, we're going to have our kindergartners count. And to do so, I'm going to simply ask them, how many of you are wearing blue jeans? How many of you are wearing glasses? And so forth. And so I'll write that on the screen and then say it so that students can also get used to the idea of uh, beginning to read these words. Now, I happen to be a very poor handwriter. So one of the first things about the smart board that I like is that it can help me with my handwriting. I'm going to click either with my finger or with my mouse on the icon that looks like a picture frame on the left hand side. That opens up the gallery which happens to have a ton of graphics in it. I'm going to type handwriting because I'm very poor at handwriting and have it search for me and find handwriting helps. Turns out there are a bunch of backgrounds that I can use. So for example, I might want to use this one, which is lined paper. Or I might want to use this one, uh, more appropriate for learning to write. But I would like to use this one because th this has large lines in it. And I can now go to the smart board, pick up my pen. I'll pick up the red pen. And I'm going to write how many. are wearing and then underneath I'm going to change colors to a different pen and how about if I say how many are wearing tennis shoes I might ask how many are wearing glasses and I'll put that down here I might change colors of pen just for the heck of it and say how many are wearing something red okay so far all I've used is the the pens on the whiteboard now what I also will learn to do is to go to the full screen mode and on the full screen mode you either take your finger or your mouse on the computer and you tap on this icon right there and I'm gonna choose full screen I'll move this out of the way. I may be putting it up here at the top. So then it will simply count how many are wearing tennis shoes. Maybe three, maybe four, and I'll write that number up there. But I want to show you that the smart board is much better than a whiteboard. And to show you that, let me go back from the full screen menu back to the original, what I'm going to call the edit menu, by tapping on this icon again. And now I'm back to that edit screen, the first screen that we looked at. If I tap on this red sentence, how many are wearing And I'm just tapping with my finger. You can also use the mouse on your computer. Notice there's several icons here. If I go over here to the upper right hand corner and see what's on that drop down menu, one of the things is handwriting recognition. And so now it's taken my very poor handwriting and turned it into words. Now, yes, the words are too big. They're running on top of the other words. But remember, there were several icons here. 
if I take my finger or mouse and simply slide this over and this time grab the circle icon in the bottom right hand corner and pull it in it makes that text smaller so what, what we're learning now is that we can move our text around by simply tapping we can make it appropriately sized by dragging Actually, I would like to get the word wearing on the same line as the word R. So I'm going to double click or double tap inside. And notice what happens is that now I get a handle out to the right and I can stretch this text box wider. Notice that now it's all on one line. So now I think you would agree this looks better than my original handwriting was. Oh, it's a little too high, isn't it? Let's drop it down. I simply tap on it and pull it down. And now I like that much better than my handwriting. Let's see if it'll recognize tennis shoes. So I'll click on tennis shoes. I'll go to the upper right hand corner. I'll click recognize tennis shoes. It did. I'll pull it down just with my finger or, or mouse. And now it's lined up pretty well on that line. Let's see if it recognizes glasses. I'll tap on the word glasses. Sure enough it does. Little too large so I'll shrink the size of it by pulling the circle icon up a little bit then I'll drop it down on the line now that looks a lot better how about something red let's see if it recognizes that I'll tap on it upper right hand corner and it, sure enough it did it's too large so again I shrink the size of it and now that looks a lot neater than it did when I first hand wrote those uh, items. What we've seen thus far is that the smart board is a whiteboard, but it's a lot more than a whiteboard. It's a whiteboard that has built-in handwriting recognition. We've also seen that when you do the handwriting recognition, text boxes are created. And if I click on a text box, like glasses, there are several things I can do with it. I can make it larger with the icon on the bottom right hand side, or smaller. I can move it by simply tapping and dragging. I'm just using my finger here, but I could use the mouse. I can also spin it. If I grab the green circle at the top, notice that it's a, it's a box that can be spun around. I, I prefer not to spin these words around, but obviously I could. I can do other things that we'll talk about in, in future screencasts as well. But as you can see, already we have an activity that we can ask our students, how many are wearing each of these? And then I would simply take my pen. Maybe four students are wearing tennis shoes today, so I would simply write the four there. How many students are wearing glasses? Maybe five are wearing glasses, and so I'll write the answer there. Something red? Maybe 11 students are wearing something red, so I might write that number out. Now, I want to show you while we have handwrite, handwritten as well as text boxes on the screen, I want to show you the difference in how the eraser will handle these. There's an eraser on the pen tray, so if I pick up that eraser and try to erase the five, sure enough, it gets erased. If I try to erase the word glasses, it doesn't. So when does the eraser work and when does it not work? Well, it works on anything that you have done with the pens. Now, when I say anything that you've done with the pens, I mean anything that you have handwritten or which you've taken your mouse and gone up and clicked on the pen icon and picked one of those. Maybe I'll pick this blue one up here. And anything that I would use the pen, I'm just actually drawing this with my finger, that will be erased with the eraser. And here's a fast way to erase. Take your eraser, draw a circle around everything that you want erased, and tap in the middle, and it all goes away. Okay, well here's one activity then that we've done with the smart board using it as a whiteboard. But you know when you teach kindergartners to count, you also want them to be touching as they count. So let's do another activity. This time let's create an activity that has some graphics in it that involve horses. And I want them to count how many horses are there. So first thing I want to do is to go to a new page. So what I will do now, I'll tap on the page icon over here on the left where I can see I really only have one page here. If I want to go to a new page, there are several ways to do it. I could go to the insert menu and choose blank page. Or 
I could simply tap on the right arrow key, which will take me to the second page. But since there is no second page, it'll create a second page. I can also tap on the drop down menu and say insert a blank page. Any of those will work. I think I'll just tap on the right arrow key and now it takes me to page two. And on page two there's nothing yet because I'm going to add some text. I'm going to add the text that says how many horses are there? Now I'll just type that text. I'll click on the text tool up here, go to my computer, click and type how many horses are there. So I need to put some horses on this page. The easiest way to find horses is, let's go back to the graphics tool, what's called the gallery. Let's, instead of handwriting, let's type in the word horses or this horse. It turns out it found a bunch of pictures. I'm going to click on one of the pictures. So I have horse showing up here. I either take my mouse or in my case my finger and just drag that horse over to the page. That horse is too large for what I want to have. So remember how we shrink it? We go to the bottom right hand corner, grab that circle and drag it in. Now I don't want to have to do that over and over again. So I, now I'm going to use the, the idea that I can clone that. So now I have two horses. Let's clone it again. And let's clone it again. And again. And we can get as many horses as we want. So now I have several horses. For that matter, why don't we add some different looking horses? After all, we want them to count horses and not all horses look alike. So this time, let's drag over this icon. Well, that's way too large. So we'll shrink and make him more appropriately sized with the others. And let's clone him a couple of times. Click on the drop down, click clone. Next, I'd like to put some animals in here that are not horses. After all, we only want to count the horses. So let's, let's search for how about cat? And sure enough, there are a lot of cats that we could choose. I'll just grab this black cat, and drag it over, and I'll make it a lot smaller. And we'll clone a few of those too. So we'll get several cats on here. How about if instead of a cat, we do a rabbit? Sure enough, there are pictures of rabbits here. And we can grab one and drag it in. We can clone it. Probably want to shrink it first in size though, don't we? So we'll shrink it a little bit and then we'll clone it. So now we have two, two rabbits. Okay, I'm going to mix these up by just taking my finger and I'm dragging the horses around. I'm going to put some of the cats up in inside. I'm going to drag this horse up to here and so forth. I'll put some of the horses down here. So I'm, I've got a mixture now of, of animals and I want them to count how many horses there are. The way I want them to use their hands when they do this is by putting a line and I'm going to ask students to come up one at a time, drag the horses across the line and as they drag I want them to count. So I'm going to click on the line tool and here's a trick. If you want a line to be perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal, hold the shift key down as you construct it. So I'm going to grab the line tool, hold my shift key down, and it makes a perfectly vertical line there. So now I would ask my students, how many horses are there? They'll come up and drag the horses. One, two, three, four, and so forth. As a math teacher, that's important because we want students to touch as they count. And each time they touch and drag, they count by one. In, in the next lesson, you're going to learn additional graphics techniques, and you'll learn more about the toolbar. See you then.